everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today we are going to be going back to basics a bit and talking about one of the most fundamental things in watercolor, and that is simply how much water to use. So um, if you haven't put much paint to paper yet, if you're like a total beginner, this can be a big stumbling block. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that they had actually quit watercolor because they couldn't figure this out quickly. So, um, and if you're an experienced painter, then this is going to be, um, you know, very kid stuff to you, but it is very important for everybody to know. Um, so I want to make sure that I sort of, um, I sort of cover it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go over what I have on my table today, supplies wise, just real quick. And um, the first thing is brushes. So I've got three different brushes with me today. And this one here is a sort of cheaper student grade brush. Um, it's made of it's synthetic bristles and it's nylon. Um, and one way to sort of test your brushes to see if they're um, gonna be well suited to watercolor, if you don't know, if they didn't say watercolor, is to snap them against your finger. And this is actually called the snap test. And um, people do this with brushes all the time to sort of determine what medium they'd be best for. So this one um, is the student grade one and it's pretty snappy. It's not very soft, it's pretty snappy, which means that although it'll work for watercolor, it will probably work better for acrylic paints. But you know, we're using it today because we want a student grade brush on the table. This next one is a synthetic squirrel brush. Um, I only have a couple real hair brushes because the synthetics are just as good in my opinion. Um, and this is a Princeton Neptune brand. This is my favorite brand. And um, if I snap this one against my finger, it's a lot softer. It really isn't snappy. So this one was specifically designed for watercolor and you can tell, you know, I, I knew it was, but you can tell by just snapping it against your finger, it's much softer. And this last one is a Winsor & Newton brand Cotman um, brush and it is also synthetic um, except for it is synthetic sable instead of synthetic black squirrel and it's quite a bit bigger too and extremely extremely soft to the touch so that's a good way to tell if your brushes are really made for watercolor is by snapping them against your finger and the reason it's important to go over this is how much water to use actually depends on quite a few things it depends on the brush you're using because different brushes hold different amounts of water and it depends on what you're trying to paint, and it depends on what paint you're using. So there are a lot of variables. So I wanna make sure we, um, we sort of show all the different ways this could go. Um, the other thing on my table is paint. So all the paints in my little palette here are artist grade. Um, I think there are, let's see, there's some Daniel Smiths, some M. Graham, some Core. I think there's even a Schminky or a Schminka in there. Um, but the point is they're all artist grade. So if you're following along with me on this exercise in a minute, and you're not getting exactly the same results, that could be part of the reason. Um, artist grade paints have more pigment in them than fillers and student grade paints have, you guessed it, more fillers than pigments. So if your results are slightly different, that could be the reason why. And the last thing um, I wanna make sure you saw is the paper. So the paper I'm using today is just a Strathmore watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press student grade, nothing fancy, this is just practice. So don't um, you don't have to pull out the good paper for this. So let's start here with um, working too dry. So we'll go over working too dry, working too wet, and sort of the happy uh, medium. So I'm grabbing my synthetic squirrel brush here and just getting the end of it wet. And I'm gonna grab some paint. Let's see, let's use indigo. And I'll grab my mixing plate so you guys can see. So I've got some indigo paint. I might want a little bit more, it's a little weak. There we go. Grab my brush and um, what you might start doing, if you were a beginner, you didn't have much experience, is you might start doing this. You might start sort of squeegeeing off the extra paint, right? Because if you look, this brush is shiny, right? So theoretically, it's full of paint, it's wet, it's ready to work because it's shiny. So I might keep doing that, squeegeeing it off. I might even do it across the edge of my water thing, right? And paint's still coming out of it. So theoretically, it's still plenty wet, right? Well, what can happen if you do this is dry brushing. So look, I'm going around here a little bit and it is really not a pretty picture. So let's look at this. The first thing is there really wasn't a great deal of paint on it, okay? 
you can see it got streaky right on the very on the very first stroke. I mean, that's where I started and already I was running out of paint right here. And the next thing you notice is that it's not pigmented. So if you look at this color here, you know, that's a pretty dark color. And then you look at the pigment we got, that's, you know, much lighter. We basically squeegeed all the color off of it. And that's not the only problem if you work too dry. The next thing that can happen is, say I was trying to cover this whole space, right? And so I go back quick, grab some more paint, squeegee it off again, because that's what I think is right at this point. And I go back and I try to fill it in. you're gonna end up with something called hard edges, okay? And hard edges happen when your paint basically dries too fast and you're still working on that section despite the fact that it's already dried on you. So the reason that's not good is if you're trying to cover an area, you don't want to have marks that you can't get rid of underneath. You want it to be even. So if you look right here, you can see um, it's subtle at this point. This might not have been the best color to illustrate with, but it's subtle. But you can see the lines that I made underneath by my first strokes. And certainly if I went over it again, you'd be able to see the lines that I just made with the second strokes. So dry brushing usually leads to things looking like they're too dry, basically. Like not pigmented enough, hard edges. Um, they just, they look, uh, I don't know if chalky is the right word, but you can sort of see. They sort of look too dry. So. Um, one other thing to know though before we move on is that a lot of people do do dry brushing on purpose okay so dry brushing is not inherently bad but it can be very bad depending on what you're trying to actually do so one way that artists use dry brushing on purpose um, is uh, when they're painting waterfalls i see this a lot so what an artist might do and i guess i'll demonstrate this here what an artist might do if they were trying to paint some sort of white water coming over the edge of a waterfall is, I don't have any gray on me, so we'll see what kind of muddy color we can make here to sort of be water. What an artist might do is dry brush to represent the white water coming over a waterfall. I'll illustrate this in a minute once I get my color right. I'm kind of picky about colors. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go with that. I don't want to spend any more time mixing. So if I wanted to do dry brushing on purpose, what I would do is I would mix a color that I liked, okay? And then I would wipe off basically all of it. And then I would drag my brush. I might have wiped off too much. <laughs> I would drag my brush across, there we go. Drag my brush across the tooth of the paper. So if you look at this here, this is actually a pretty good example. If you look at this, what I've just got here, if you were to block that off and it were to be surrounded by, you know, waterfally things, this could look very much like white water because you've left these white sections by brushing just across the texture of the paper. It didn't go down into the texture of the paper. You have something that does kind of look like splashing white water, which would be very hard to achieve any other way. So dry brushing is not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people use it intentionally for different things, but um, it's not always a good thing either. So the next thing, let's move right along, is working too wet. So I'm gonna switch brushes for this. I'm gonna grab this bigger brush over here. And um, I never used to use these bigger brushes because they hold just an insane amount of water. And that's, that's characteristic of any watercolor brush. Both of these, hold a ton of water, they will take overnight to dry. Even if you try to really dry them, even if you have like a paper towel, you try to get every last drop of water out, they still will not dry um, at least for a couple hours, usually overnight, at least with the big ones. For me, it always takes overnight for them to dry. So that's a good way also to know if your brush is made for watercolor is it's going to take a long time to dry because it is just designed specifically to just really want to hold on to that water. Um, and you know, brushes designed for acrylics and oils are not designed that way. So I've fully saturated my brush here just with water. And actually, first thing I'm gonna do is wipe up this color over here. I want a new color. Okay. Let's use some yellow. So I'm gonna pick up some paint here from my palette, take it over to my mixing plate. 
make sure I have plenty on my brush. I want a lot. Say I'm trying to cover a big area. I'm using a big brush. I just want it very, very saturated, like almost sopping wet. Okay. So I'm going to paint a big area. You can see how wet this is. I mean, you can actually see it. It's, you know, it is dripping wet here. I might even grab a little bit more, really spread that color around. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's wrong with this, right? You covered it evenly, it's nice and vivid, you know, what's, what's the problem with that? It looks good. Well, um, it looks good now, but here's what's gonna happen. If you look at the edges of this right here, there are puddles. And this is what happens when you work too wet, is you get puddles of paint um, usually around the edges of whatever you're doing. And the reason this is a problem is because puddles often lead to something called blooms. And um, some artists call them back runs. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, other artists call them like cauliflowers. <laughs> um, it, whatever you call them, they all mean the same thing. It's basically a sort of white cauliflowery shape that shows up in your paintings. And you can Google this. You can Google watercolor blooms or watercolor back runs and sort of see what I mean. But um, I'll actually grab an example here, so you can see. So up here in the corner, this is just a radish painting. Up here in the corner, if you look at this leaf, this half of it, the farther half of it here, is darker. And this half right here is lighter. And you can sort of see this edge right here in between them, this sort of cauliflowery edge. Well, what happened was, when this was wet, this half of the leaf dried before this half of the leaf did. This half of the leaf probably had a puddle in it. And so this half was dry, and as this half was taking longer to dry, the extra water pushed into the pigment of the part of the leaf that was already dry. So it actually does push the pigment away. The extra water pushes it away. And you can see it. That's why this part of the leaf is lighter than this part. So that's what's going to happen if you have puddles, or if you have puddles. Um, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes I was sure it was going to happen and it didn't and vice versa, but usually that is what will happen. And there are quite a few on this page you can see, quite a few on this painting. And this I did on purpose because I wanted a very loose look. But um, most of the time blooms or back runs um, look like mistakes. So you can use them intentionally. It's just like dry brushing. You can use it intentionally. Um, some artists use blooms um, as clouds. Uh, they'll, they'll use it as a tool to get some very interesting looking clouds in their landscape paintings. And other artists use them just because they look very cool. They're very interesting. Um, you know, some use them sort of like I did in the radish painting as sort of a way for a painting to look sort of, uh, loose. Um, and that's all fine. It's totally fine to use them intentionally. However, if you're not intending to make a bloom, um, it's going to look like a mistake. And it, that can be really heartbreaking because usually once it's formed, there's really nothing you can do about it. Like you can't really fix it if it's already happened. And um, that can be so sad when you create like an awesome painting and then there's just like this big bloom in it and you're like, why? So um, just like dry brushing, you can use them intentionally. But um, if you're not using them intentionally, they will look like a mistake. So the good news is it is very easy to fix this problem right here of having too much water at the edges. And um, there are actually two things you can do. Um, the first thing is you can grab yourself a paper towel or a tissue. Um, I like paper towels better. I feel like they last longer. Um, but tissues work. And just dab it right in and sop up that extra paint. Just anywhere where it looks like it is just much wetter than the rest of it. You can just dab it right in and take it out. And what this does is it equalizes the drying time. So now this middle of this section is at the exact same point in the drying process as this piece, right? Because this isn't any wetter anymore. We took, we, sorry, <laughs> we got rid of the extra moisture around the edge here. So they're going to dry at the same rate now. And that's going to prevent a bloom from happening. Now, the other thing you can do to get rid of a bloom is I'm going to use this brush here is you can do something. And this is probably what more, um, uh, more experienced artists do. They're gonna, they would take a brush like this and they're gonna squish out all that water. Okay, they're gonna take a paper towel and just try to dry this brush as best they can. Now I'd be inclined to pull it to a point because it makes it easier. But then what they're gonna do is they're going to dip 
the brush into the area that's too wet, okay? And it just sops that extra paint, look at that, just sops it right up. And this technique is called thirsty brush. Now, this just really goes to show how, um, how much watercolor brushes are designed to just really want to hold onto water. Like, look at that. I mean, I just got rid of that whole extra puddle because this brush really wanted to suck up water. So that's something you can do too. You don't have to use the paper towel, you can use a dry brush. And I actually probably prefer the dry brush because I feel like I have more control and I feel like it's a more subtle way to do it. Um, sometimes with the paper towel, you can end up leaving marks that you didn't really mean to leave um, if you're not gentle enough. So, but the good news is it's very easy to fix if you work too wet, it's very easy to fix it. In fact, I would say that if you are afraid of you know both working too dry and working too wet, I would say, work too wet instead of working too dry because you can fix working too wet but working too dry really it is not easy to fix it generally you know it, you'll generally be stuck with whatever you did if you work too dry but working too wet is easily fixed so this patch is going to dry nice and evenly it's going to be a really nice yellow patch and then this over here there's really nothing i can do about this even if i paint over it what happened underneath is still going to show so this of course brings us to the last thing here and that is working evenly, right? You don't want to work too wet, not too dry. So I'm going to grab my cheaper student grade brush for this and I'm going to clean out my palette again too because I want a new color. Let's see, I think I will use a pink. I hate that squeaky noise. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab myself some ultramarine pink. And this brush, this cheaper brush, as I mentioned earlier, is not um, like 100% ideal for watercolor. I can feel it as I'm using it, it's snappier, it's not as soft. Um, it's not gonna hold as much water. So if you're using a cheaper student grade brush or a brush that's designed for acrylics, you might actually accidentally dry brush um, just because the brush isn't made for it. So I'm going to make sure I have this pretty wet and I'm going to paint a um, sort of fly by the night oval. And an important thing to evenness is working quickly because if you get any sort of hard edges, it's just like the dry brushing, if you get hard edges, um, there's not a great deal you can do about that once they've already formed. You have to basically keep working it while it's wet or you're just going to get a hard edge. So if you look right here, if you look at my oval, or it's sort of pill shaped actually, um, you can see that there aren't any puddles and there also aren't any areas that look like this, that are just over the texture of the paper. So I can actually zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so you can see the oval is relatively even and it's also not even shiny looking. So it's, um, it's dried very quickly too because it's so even. Now I could feel when I was using this brush that it really, really did not hold a lot of water. So um, you might have a harder time um, getting uh, working wet or even just working even with a brush that really isn't designed to hold a great deal of water. But it is possible, you know, no matter what brush you have, so long as you, um, you try it out and you sort of figure out what type of brush it is, you can use it for whatever technique you want, um, if you really mean it. So um, I hope this has helped everybody today. Um, I wanna make sure that you understand though that no matter what you paint, um, or what supplies you have, you do sort of have to develop a sense for this. Like nobody really sits down and knows exactly how much water to use. Like it's sort of a touch and feel thing. You get better at it the more you try it. Um, and I would say as I've been painting for quite some time, I probably, I never work too dry. That never happens to me anymore. Um, I do work too wet. That mistake happens to me much more often, but it's easy to correct so it's not really a big deal. Um, as far as hitting the mark right in the zone of exactly how wet to work, I, you know, I probably do that at least half the time and then the other half of the time I work too wet. But like I said, it's sort of a personal thing. You will develop a sort of sixth sense over time as to how much water to use. You will get better at this. You sort of, you sort of just have to trial and error and train yourself. There's no really quick, easy way 
to know how to do it. But um, like I probably mentioned, uh, working too wet is what I would do if you're sort of on the fence, if you're afraid of uh, working too dry or too wet. I think it's better to work too wet because it's easy to fix. So um, once again, I hope this helped everybody today. Um, if you liked this video, um, then I would love it if you liked it below. Um, leave me a comment uh, if you have any questions and um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And um, also I wanted to mention if you're struggling with transparency, um, which is basically getting uh, the right shade of a color. Um, so say you wanted a darker indigo and you're sort of just struggling with getting it that way. I have a video on that and that's a little bit of a separate thing than how much water to use. It's related, but it's not exactly the same thing. And that's on the channel and that's called Beginner Watercolor Exercises Part 1. And that deals all with the transparency exercise. So if you were to sort of do this and do that, I think you would really be armed pretty well for, um, for all the fundamentals of watercolor. So... So uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody, and um, I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. Mm -hmm.